How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Elden Ring video. Now for today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys some early game tips and tricks. So this video is for those of you that are just getting into Elden Ring. Maybe you're struggling a little bit. Maybe you're one to two hours in and you're kind of in a tough spot. You can't really figure out what to do uh, or how to level up. And this game can be a little difficult. They really don't hold your hand. They don't really tell you where to go or what to do. They kind of just send you off on your own to figure everything out and it can definitely be overwhelming for a lot of people so don't worry I'm going to give you guys some pretty beginner tips and tricks to hopefully help you guys out so the first tip I have for you guys is an early farming method so once you beat the tutorial and you get out into the open world and maybe you're just struggling with combat and you need a couple extra level ups but you don't want to do it from fighting well you can in fact just farm resources in the environment uh, this is what I did very very early on I went around I collected all the berries and the plants and I went around and killed a bunch of animals I killed some deer and some birds and some I, they look like rabbits and just any little creature I could find you get a little bit of runes from killing the animals and then you can sell all their body parts so after you know maybe a half an hour to an hour of farming you go to a vendor and you can sell all the berries and plants and bones and just animal parts and this is just a really good way early early on to farm runes to purchase whatever items you want or to level up. So the next tip I have for everyone has to do with an early game vendor and believe it or not they're actually pretty easy to miss because I actually missed them. It wasn't until later in the game that I actually discovered that this vendor existed and I missed out on some pretty important loot and some of this loot would have made a world of difference for my playthrough. So in the starting area you go up maybe 50 yards uh, and there's this old church and in this church you will find a vendor sitting by a campfire and he sells some pretty important early on items. He sells a torch he sells a telescope so if you want to scope out enemies at a distance you can have a telescope to do that uh, the torch is very handy for caves and playing at nighttime honestly you're going to be playing in dark places a lot in this game so I highly highly recommend that you purchase his torch and then he sells some early game armor so if you want to upgrade your armor you can do that here as well and then one of the most important things that he sells is actually a crafting kit and a crafting kit is needed if you want to craft things out in the environment maybe you want to craft yourself some arrows or you want to craft yourself some fire bombs that you can use in combat anything that you would want to craft you have to have a crafting kit and I didn't have this for hours upon hours and it would have been really really handy if I was going into some of the boss encounters if I had the ability to craft myself some gadgets to help me in said boss fight so definitely pick up the torch and the crafting kit for sure trust me you don't want to miss out on these so the next step I have for you guys is actually fairly simple and I didn't realize this until like a good six hours into my gameplay but when you die in this game you drop all of your runes and you have to go find them again and pick them back up and if you don't find them before you die a second time then you lose all of your runes and it is super frustrating in any Souls game when this happens. In this playthrough alone I know I had like 12,000 runes and I got stuck in this really hard place and I couldn't find my body and you know I lost out on 12,000 runes. So I just went for the longest time just going based off of memory. I couldn't tell you how many times I got lost and couldn't remember where I died. Well, it's actually a little bit easier than what I was doing because when you die, your runes actually show up on your compass. So when you die, you can easily find where you were previously when you died. Just look at your compass and it should take you straight there. So yeah, when you're dead, just look for the compass. You can find your dead body and you can get your runes back. So next up is another very, very important tip that you definitely want to do early on. This was a game changer for me because I went for the longest time and I didn't know that this was a thing. But this tip has to do with buying the Spirit Calling Bell. Now the Spirit Calling Bell lets you summon spirits to fight for you in combat. And let me tell you, it is a game changer. Uh, you can use it for boss fights. I personally like to summon wolves. I summon three wolves and then they run around and they distract the enemies for me. And while they're distracting enemies, I can either pull out a bow and pick them off at a distance or I can just go in and attack the odd enemies out. I mean, I, I just love this. It made the game so much easier and it was so much more enjoyable once I had the ability to do this. But they don't explain to you how to do it. So you can get the bell in two different ways that I'm aware of. After you get your horse, you go back to the same church and you go there at nighttime and there should be a ghostly figure just 
chilling in the church. Now you can talk to her and she will give you the bell, or if for some reason she's not there, after about an hour or two of gameplay, once you get your horse, you will eventually talk to the same hooded girl that gave you your horse the first time, and she will give you the option to go to the round table hold. So this is still pretty early on in the game, and when you go to the round table hold, there is a vendor there and they will actually sell you the spirit calling bell for 100 runes, so that's pretty cheap. So definitely, definitely be sure to pick it up because you 100% want to summon spirits when you're going into boss fights. So the next tip I have for everyone is a better version of a farm. Once you get yourself leveled up and you're a little bit more confident with taking on some enemies, this is a good way to farm runes. What you have to do is go over to this location on your map. It's called the Third Church of Marika. You mainly just have to follow the main road as you can see on the map and when you follow the main road it takes you pretty much straight there. And when you get to the church, what you want to do is actually head around the back side of the church, and you're going to want to head down into this little creek. And when you do, you're going to find this little portal, and it's going to ask you to travel in the portal, and you go ahead and you say yes. Now when you're done loading, it's going to take you to a new location pretty far away from where you previously were. Now this is a pretty dangerous area. It's full of high level enemies, so definitely be careful. Now when you spawn in, you're going to want to run down the hill, all the way down the hill next to the bridge. And as you're running down to the bridge, there is a golden tree where you can get a golden seed where you can upgrade your flasks uh, to give you more health or magic if you want. And then you run all the way down to the bridge and there is a resting spot so you can fast travel back to this location whenever you want. Just be careful of the bridge because there is a dragon on the bridge and he will definitely 100% kill you pretty early on in the game. So once you rest here, all you want to do is ride on your horse and essentially just kill the enemies in this area. The enemies in this area are really tiny for whatever reason, but boy do they do a lot of damage. So if they make contact with you, you're probably going to die. So definitely be careful. Take them out however you see fit. What I like to do is just ride my horse around them in circles and it kind of confuses them and then I just spam them to death. And every single one of these small creatures that you kill will drop 1,000 runes. So this is what I've been doing to farm. You know, you kill seven or eight of them, boom, you get an easy seven or eight thousand runes, which you can use for different shops or you can use to level up. So the next tip I have on my list has to do with buying a lantern. Now a lantern is obviously a better version of a torch. Now you can buy the lantern from this vendor. I'm pretty sure it's the same vendor that we saw earlier on in the church. I found him up in this swampy area, as you can see on my map. It's kind of hard to see because my map is still shadowed out. But when you come up to this area on the other side of the castle, there is this swampy area. And in the swamp, you will find the vendor. And as you can see, the vendor is selling a number of different items. He sells a couple of decent weapons. He sells some light armor and he sells the lantern for 1800 souls. Now what's so handy about the lantern is that you can equip it while holding two weapons. When you hold the torch, it replaces one of your weapons. So for me, it would replace my shield. So I was running around with a torch and a sword. Well, that's not too handy if you ever want to block someone in combat. So the lantern lets you equip it while using your sword and shield still. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You definitely, definitely want the lantern as you're exploring Elden Ring. There's so many caves and dark places and stuff. You 100% want the lantern. And once you get the lantern, it pretty much makes the torch obsolete. So the next tip I have for you guys has to do with one of the game's first major bosses. Now the first boss is right outside the castle and he's protecting the castle. So you're gonna have to go through him to get to the castle. And if you guys are like me, you're going to die to this dude a lot. I died time and time and time again. It was just so frustrating. I probably wasted three hours trying to kill this dude. I would fight him for like a good half an hour, then I'd give up and come back later and fight him again and give up and come back later. And he was just a beast. Then it wasn't until I combined a bunch of different things that I was finally able to take him down. Now, obviously I was using the summoning that I told you about. I threw out some wolves and it was a big help because he was distracted by all the wolves so that definitely helped but there's actually a way that you can take this boss down a lot easier and it has to do with a purchasable item that you can get now if you go to this location on your map, it's called Murkwater Cave. And if you go inside the cave, you'll eventually come across this big room that's kind of empty with this chest just sitting out in the open. And when you search the chest, it's going to proc a like mini boss battle with this random dude. You beat on him for a little bit and then he will surrender. And once he surrenders, he will become a shop vendor. And once he gives you the option to buy from him, he actually sells this item that is reusable that will come in handy when you're doing that boss fight. It's called Margit's Shackle. and it 
it will briefly bind the boss to the ground during your encounter. So this was super, super handy. This made the world a difference. It only buys you a couple seconds of DPS that you can do to the boss, but a couple seconds is better than nothing at all. So when you buy this, you activate it during the boss fight. It knocks the boss down to the ground, and then you can pretty easily beat on him. And that is how I managed to kill one of the first major bosses that you come across in Elden Ring. So that is going to do it for these quick tips and tricks for you guys. Hopefully they helped you out. If they did, please give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. If you guys like Elden Ring content, then let me know down in the comments and I will keep making Elden Ring videos. This game is pretty massive, so I feel like there's a lot of tips that I could give you guys going forward in the future. But if you guys want to watch me stream this on Twitch, I play at Swanee Plays Games Live. And that is going to do it for this video, everyone. And I will talk to you all next time.